Hey guys, Miss Wallace here. I want to talk to you a little bit about circuits and some of the vocabulary with the electricity. So one way that's easy to tell the difference between series and parallel, whenever we look at a circuit, you always want to look and see, does it have one loop or does it have more than one loop? So in order to remember this, an easy way to do that is we know series starts with an S. So if you think of that S is always meaning simple, that means that it's only going to have one loop of electricity, okay, or one loop in the circuit. The problem with that is when one bulb in that circuit um, goes out, they're all going to go out, okay, and I'll show you some examples here in a minute. So series is simple. It is only one loop, okay. I think my screen froze there for a second. So when one bulb goes out, they all go out. So the other way to remember um, the other type of circuit, parallel, you see the two L's in parallel. So I want you to always remember those two L's are reminding you two or more loops of electricity. Now the good thing about that is when one of those bulbs goes out, the rest are going to stay lit. That's how houses are wired. Um, if, if something were to happen and your bedroom light went out, not all of the lights in the house go out. Most Christmas lights that are made today are made in a parallel circuit. And so what happens is if one bulb goes out, just that section will go out and not the whole entire strand. Back when I was a kid, all the lights were made in series. And so if one light went out, you had to test every single bulb on the strand because you wouldn't know which one it was uh, until you found it. And then you could get your uh, strand lit back. So some other reminders here, conductors. Remember, conductors are what are going to allow the electricity to go through, and these are the things that would shock you, right? And so pretty much all metals, aluminum, copper, coins, you're going to see those as a lot of answer choices on things, but don't forget water will also conduct electricity. If you have a hair dryer at home or something like that, I promise you there is going to be a warning tag on there, a safety tag on that hair dryer on the cord to remind you not to use that when you are near water. Because if you were to drop that into, just say for instance, a bathtub full of water, when you're in it, um, you're gonna receive uh, an electrical shock. Potentially, it could kill you. So it's very, very dangerous. And then the other side, the opposite of conductors we know are insulators. These do not allow electricity to go through. These are the things that protect us. So most of your conductors, Copper is our most common conductor in wires. We're going to be wrapped in a plastic coating, and that's for our protection. So if I grab the wire while it's plugged in, it's not going to shock me. But we also see um, guys that work on the big power lines. They wear really thick rubber gloves. That's for their protection. Also, cloth like wool and cotton would be an insulator wood, and even glass. Now remember, glass will conduct heat, but it will not conduct electricity, okay? So those are important things to remember. Now I wanna show you um, some symbols. So we're used to seeing, when we look at a circuit, we're used to seeing this, right? Where we've drawn our batteries, we've got our cute little light bulbs and our wires all connected. But these are not actual symbols for circuits. When you get into, um, higher grade levels, you're actually gonna see different symbols. So a light bulb will be represented with a circle with an X in it. Battery is a really cool symbol. It's a long line and a short line. And so this is representing the positive terminal and the negative terminal of the battery. And remember, electricity always flows from the negative to the positive. I'll show you an example in just a second of that also. These are gonna be our switches. So just usually two dots with a closed switch would be your line connecting or an open switch if they're not connecting. And then our wire. Okay, so let me show you some examples here. This would be series circuit because the first thing I'm going to look and do, I see it's simple. I only have one loop of electricity, right? It doesn't matter if your wires are at right angles or if they're squiggly lines. Okay, that does not matter. What matters is that we see the connection points. So here would be my light bulb. This would be a closed switch. And here's my battery. Now, a lot of people get confused because they say, oh, there's a gap here. That's not a closed circuit. That's not a complete circuit. So this bulb is not going to light up. It would be a gap if you had a missing piece over here. But remember, this is your battery symbol. 
So if I'm going to trace the flow of electricity in this example, I'm coming from the negative, because remember the short little side is the negative, the long side is the positive, and it's going to flow out of the negative. It can go through this switch because it is closed. It can go through the bulb, and we can go back to the positive. If we can go from the negative around to the positive, then this little bulb is going to light up, okay? If I can't get back over to the positive, it's not going to work. So here's another way of drawing it, and then this is our kind of cartoon way of drawing it. There's my battery, here's my switch, and there's my light bulb. One simple loop, we know that a series. Parallel, in contrast, remember parallel, those two L's telling us two or more loops. I've drawn a parallel circuit here that has three loops of electricity. So I come from the negative. Oh, look, I've got an open circuit here, so I couldn't get through, so none of these would work. But if I were to close this switch, I have one loop in the small. I've got another loop here in the medium. And then my longest loop would be my third loop, okay? And then this is just kind of our cartoon drawing of what that would look like. I've just drawn the, the switch closed, okay? So let me show you some examples. So in um, this first one, I want you to ask yourself, is this series or is it parallel? Okay, I just see one loop, so that would be series. I've got my batteries. They must be, if you have more than one battery, they must be connected positive to negative. If it were pos positive to positive, then it would not work, okay? So in this example, electricity is going to flow out of the negative, and it's going to go through the green bulb, the blue bulb, the red bulb, and it can get back over here to the positive. Therefore, all three of those light bulbs are going to light up. Okay? So compare this one to this circuit here. I see more than one loop. I see a loop here with the red bulb, a loop with the blue, and a loop with the green bulb. Okay? No switches here. But I know electricity is coming out of the negative. It can make it through all three of these. Okay, so all three of those are going to work. Okay, now one thing that's important to notice, these bulbs are going to be sharing the voltage of these batteries. So if I were to remove one of these batteries and just kept one, my bulbs are not going to shine as bright because I have less voltage. Right? If I added a third battery into this, then it's gonna, they're going to shine even brighter because now we've increased the voltage. So let's take a look down here at these bottom two. So first question, series or parallel? I see more than one loop in both of these. And then I also have some switches, okay? So you're always going to have these scenarios that you're given. They're going to say, if you close switch one, which bulbs are always going to be lit? So in this first example, I see green is always going to be lit, okay? It's on a complete pathway, always. There's no switch controlling it. But if I close switch one, that means now electricity can go through the blue, and so it would be lit. So blue and green, right? Okay, well, let's leave switch one open and close switch two. Now it can go through the red bulb and the green bulb. If switch one is open, it's not going to make it through the blue, okay? This one is also parallel, just set up a little different. The first thing I noticed about this one is this bulb does not have a wire on the other side. If your bulb does not have a wire over on the other side, it's not going to work. Never, ever, ever. Okay, I don't care if you close the switch, it's never going to work because it is not part of a complete circuit. So right now, neither one of these bulbs work because the switch is open. So watch, come out of the negative, I go through the green, but if it's open, I can't get past it. Remember, if I can't get back to this positive, it's not going to work. Same way with the red bulb. So if I were to close switch one, then both of these would be lit because both pathways are going to be complete. Okay? I hope this helps um, clarify some of the confusion. Keep working on those mazes and get those submitted. And if you have any questions, let me know.